Hey guys, I've been uh, working on putting together my seed starting system based on Kratky, Aquapon uh, Kratky Hydroponics. Um, I know that seed starting with hydroponics could mean I'm starting seed for hydroponics. I'm trying to do this so that I'm using hydroponic technology to start seeds and it doesn't matter whether these seeds are going into a full size system or if they're going into the ground. So it's not as high density as a lot of other systems maybe you would see for seed starting. Um, the way I've got it set up now, and I'll go through what I've done here in just a minute. Um, each batch I ran through here, I could start 90 plants. Uh, if I actually build out one more to go down on the bottom, that would be 120 plants per run just from this system. For me, since I'm not a commercial producer or anything, that's a lot of plants. Uh, it also means that the first time I start plants through this system, it's more than paid for itself. I've got about, um, with the, the rack and the lights, I've got about 90 bucks in, 10 bucks for a timer, call it a hundred bucks. I don't know that you really can count the net pots because they get used over and over and over and over again. But, um, you know, two packs of net pots, they're like 15 bucks a pack. So there's 130 bucks. Um, the aluminum pans, I don't know what those things cost. I'll talk to you about why I use them in a minute. I already had them. That's why I, one of the reasons I used them. Um, but they can't be that much. Um, people throw them away all the time. I mean, you cook them three or four times, you're like, okay, this thing's done. Some people use them single use. So not a lot of money. That's it. That's the whole thing. And then, you know, you fertilize, but you're going to pay for that anyway. Uh, but a gallon of concentrate that makes over 200 gallons of fertilizer costs 30 bucks. So, I mean, how, how long can I use that before I run out? I guess I could do the math and figure it out, but a long time. Each one of those pans holds just under about two gallons of, uh, of, of fertilizer fluid. Uh, so you could work it out if you really wanted to. I'm not that worried about it. Uh, Kratky, for those that don't understand, the method of aquaponics or hydroponics, I've done aquaponics so long I get stuck on it. Uh, hydroponics is that uh, instead of pumping air in there or running a pump or something like that, you let the water fall, and as the water falls, the roots follow, and the air gap gives the plant all the air that it needs. And it, we start out with some air gap already. I'll show you in just a second. So this is why I'm doing this. This is an upstairs guest room. Uh, as you can see, it was recently used, and we hadn't put it all back together yet. But this is upstairs. It's the only place inside the house I have room to do this where I won't get in trouble with the, with the wife for taking up space with something ugly like this especially with the glowing pink lights, which I don't really want downstairs with my grandkids in a second and stuff like that anyway, because it can be dangerous to your eyes. And you'll see what I mean when I turn it on here in a second. Um, so it's just an out of the way place, which means I'm going to forget about it. I'm not going to take care of it twice a day, three times a day where you're watering seedlings. You really need to do that. So I want something that's almost fire and forget. Like if I don't come up here for five days, nothing bad happens and everything just keeps growing. So all I'm going to have to do with this system is until the roots get down for my starter plants is just add a little bit of hydroponics fertilizer fluid as the level drops. I'm, I think I'm going to have no problem being a week in between that. And within two to three weeks, there should be enough roots down that, you know, it, it, it really becomes pretty self-contained at that point. And since this is a starting system, not a growing system, there's a point at which the plants need to come out and go out to a larger system or get planted in the ground or whatever anyway. What I'm going to be starting in here, and Dana Cat snuck in the house somehow. Anyway, uh, what I'm going to be starting in here is mostly winter vegetables that I can put out into my greenhouse, into my larger systems. But I'm really setting this up to do all of the plants that I generally end up buying, like peppers and tomatoes and eggplant, stuff like that, for the, you know, the, the spring planting summer garden. So I'm going to look throw in... A couple tomatoes, a couple peppers to see how this does. So I'm not depending on it to work well for those plants in February when I'm starting them and then not have it work. If I need to tweak something, I'll find out now. I'll have a couple plants that I probably won't have much to do with. I guess I could put them in a bucket, keep them in a the garage or something. But, um, you know, it's way too early. It's December to be starting tomatoes and peppers. But we'll do it just to see. Um, the way I came up with this, I was looking around for something. You can see I got these lights here by Barisa, or whatever the hell the name, Chinese company. These things are awesome. You get six of these for 60 bucks. They're 10 bucks a piece, 24 watts each, and they are bright. Let me show you that real quick here. Uh, I'm not going to leave them on because I actually have a set of <laughs> protective glasses, believe it or not, up here, but I don't want to film with them on. But, I mean, these things are just banging bright. 
we turn that off because i mean it, it it gets to your eyes right away and and be careful with these uv lights they can hurt you um full spectrum what, whatever um so again i just want to kind of fire and forget so i used these aluminum pants because i wanted something that gave enough space between here and here for the plants you know to get up about that high or maybe even a little higher um all of the sterilite rubber made etc things that i had you know you're talking like they were this deep and that's a lot more fluid that we don't need to be using so since this is a starting system i want to go shallow i'm sure there's some people that can find something better than these but they work and i already had them so they were basically free to me the next thing is this foam board uh, my wife shops the store, what the heck is it called? Hobby Lobby. So I was going to use like insulated foam board from like Home Depot or Lowe's. This stuff is $6.99 a sheet. Um, it probably lasts damn near forever because it's mostly styrofoam. Uh, so it's really, it doesn't really get wet in this application because the water's below it anyway. Probably some humidity on it. It should last a long, long time for that investment. One cut, cut to width of this shelf and you end up with a piece about that big. A strip off the end. And I'm sure I can figure out things like for doing crack key and jars and stuff. Probably perfect little list. Probably get three or four off each waste strip. So then there's almost no waste. Uh, front to back, they are already pre-cut to the perfect distance. They're just a little bit wider than the shelves themselves. They stick out a bit. I've already had this closed. It's a little tight, but it closes no problem. That way all the humidity is held in. This rack is 30 bucks. Is this a high-end piece of equipment? No, but it works perfectly for the application. The lights, if you look in there, they come with mounting hardware that just clips onto the rails uh, and little split rings. For these ones down here, I just put the split ring over the, uh, the rung of the shelving. It's like wire shelving, uh, wherever I wanted it. Up here for the top to mount the racks, all you do is take some uh, electric fence wire and just put a, a strip across each. My thought long term is, if I buy one more set of these lights, I can have three lights to a row, but I'm gonna see how they grow with two. But if I do that, I'll have enough lights to put three on the bottom and add my uh, fourth shelf. Um, I don't know if that's gonna be necessary. Like I said, there seems like there's plenty of light here. Uh, with the plastic coating, it's supposed to be a mini greenhouse. I don't know that this would be a very useful thing outside. I think it'd cook your plants, even on a fairly modest day, if you didn't get it open. Uh, but up here, it's going to hold the humidity in. It's going to keep the temperatures up just from the uh, radiated heat off the lights. Um, the foam board, what I did was I drilled it out with a 1 and 7 eighths inch bit. You could certainly use a 2 inch bit. There's no uh, hole saw, I'm sorry. No reason you couldn't. But by doing that, check that out. I was able to push them all the way in and they fit tight. Now, if you were drilling into plastic, PVC pipe, something like that, you'd want to probably use a two inch hole saw because you are going to end up with them sticking up a little bit if you don't. And you don't need to worry about them falling through uh, because if you use good neck cups anyway, they have a little lip. These are the neck cups I use. I will put a link to where you can get these on an Amazon uh, in the show notes. What I like about these is they don't get all cracked and falling apart and, you know, single use or maybe two uses out of them. Uh, I've used these in uh, my aquaponics in deep water, and I've gotten five, six, seven grows out of them or more. Uh, I'm really not even sure. You know, every once in a while, one gets to the point where you're like, yeah, that's got to go. But these things really last. They're really well built. Uh, so I decided to stick with them with that. And again, since they are actually two inches right there, that eighth inch, if you're going into foam board, you can push them in. That means... That if I need to pull the whole daggone thing out, I can lift it up and just simply remove it with with full stability there. So that's why I went that way. This is a half inch foam board. And where's my board? That's why I wanted you to see this. Gives you about that much stick through. And what I want, and I'm new to this, so I'm sure somebody will tell me I'm wrong. But I want my water about there when it starts. A lot of people will say with cracky, you want to be just barely touching it. Well, number one, one of the weaknesses in these aluminum pans are not perfectly level and they get a little cattywampus. So if you're just barely touching one, you're probably not touching the other. So I want some forgiveness. But the other thing is, is I'm doing seed starting with this. What I'm looking to do is figure it's going to take a while for that water to drop that, what, half inch. And by then, maybe we'll have roots through. And I want to have to add 
uh, affluent to this as seldom as possible. Now, I know people are going to tell me, you really want to pump air into this? That's not cracky, but I got myself an air pump, and if I'm unhappy with the growth, I'll put air into one level, and we'll see what the difference is. Is it worth it? I want to do as little as possible. Last thing, lights are going to go on a timer. I don't. I, when I say I don't want to have to touch this for a week at a time, I mean it. So this timer will come on, and I'm going to run these probably 14 hours of light a day. This is my favorite timer. All, it's 15-minute increments for each little little um, tit you push down. You push down whatever you want, and you set it to whatever time you want. So let's say that right now, that would go to 12 p.m. Let's say it's 2 o'clock right now. You turn it to 2 o'clock, you have everything pushed down, and it works. And guess what? If you're inside doing lights for plants, plants don't care what time of day it is. They just care how much light they get. So once you have it set to, say, 14 hours, the power goes out for an hour or two, it comes back on, yeah, it's going to be two hours delayed, but it's still going to give you 14 hours of light. This thing's bulletproof, and if you're using it on a fish tank or something, you want to look at it, it's got an always-on. So if you just want to turn it on, you've got that little side switch. These things... I love these things. Whoever invented these should get the Nobel Peace Prize. I'm telling you, because it keeps people from killing each other over power strips. Well, these are as mini extension cords. Again, I'll put a link to these in the video notes for you as well. What this does mainly is for a power strip so that when you plug that into a power strip and then, you know, your router came with this big honking plug, you only take up one space on the power strip instead of three. So that way, if you have a six-hole power strip, you can use all six holes. The other thing they're nice for, since they're short and they don't get in the way, uh, my electrical outlet just happens to be directly behind that. So by using this little short cord, this thing's going to pop out of the side over there. And if I decide I want to change my photo period, I don't have to go dinking around back there, messing with it and knocking things over and spilling water on the ground. Um, so that's my plan. Uh, when I get it planted and it starts to grow and all, I'll come back and do another video. But I wanted to show you, sorry about the hand action there, just one more cool thing I came up with. You might have noticed the great big number one there, and it says one, two, three, four, five, six, blah, 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 16, seven, all the way up to 30 in the back. I made myself a little cheat sheet like this, and when I plant each board, you can see board number one, each space, all the way down to 30. Board number two, board number three, and so on. That way, I don't have to label any of my plants all I have to do is keep this little paper on hand, and if I you know, pull something out, swap something out, I can just line through it and put whatever I replaced it with uh, until you know you run maybe two runs through here and then just print out another one. I just made this in Excel and printed it out. If anybody really wants it, if you can't figure out how to do this yourself, you can email and I will send you uh, an attachment. If you can't figure out what my email address is, you don't know me well enough to get it. Uh, it's because I have the most public email on the planet. Anyway, that's the whole thing for now. Um, I think this is going to really work well, uh, and being able to produce 90 to 120 plants at a shot, uh, with a fire and forget. I mean, again, this is what I don't want to be like, I forgot to go up there yesterday and water the seedlings and now they're all dead. Uh, I don't want that to happen. I don't think it will. And we'll see. I know there's going to be people like, well, it's going to be too cold. up. Well, first of all, you don't know the temperature in this room. It's always warm as hell up here. Second, you have those lights. If it does seem like it's warm, I've got plenty of little aquarium heaters because I'm an aquarium hobbyist. I could easily just heat the water. Or I could throw a heat mat under there. We're going to see. My goal with this, before anybody starts, well, you can add this. and you can. I want to do as little as possible. As little as possible. Whatever the least amount of effort is. You can see my extra fertilizer. I've got it sitting there. It's in a bucket. All I'm going to do is throw a, a, a towel over that thing so it doesn't get all skanky and green and, and, and develop algae. When I need more affluent, I'm just going to dump it in with that jar that's sitting there. That's why that jar is there. I want this to be dead, simple, minimal input, minimal effort. So we start here. I don't need plants right now. I don't really need to get in earnest with my seed starting until February, about February 15th. That gives me two and a half months. What? Yeah, about two months right now. Two months to play with this and figure out what is the least I have to do for the maximum return. And when I figure that out, I'll tell you guys what it is. So if we need to add something or worry about something else, we'll do it. Until then, catch up with you later, guys.